I'm joined live in the studio by Matt Canavan, National Senator. What do you make of this this appointment of Matt Keane by the federal? I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised in the in the in the slightest. Uh, uh, obviously, Matt Keane has had well uh, well publicised views on on renewable energy. Uh, he's had his disagreements with uh, his federal coalition uh, counterparts and. Uh, yeah, I'm not surprised he's taken this gig. Good luck to him, good luck to the government. But uh, their agenda so far is failing. It's failing big time. They promised us all they'd cut $275 off our power bills. That hasn't happened. Uh, we're now seeing risks, major risks, of energy outages this winter because we're nearly out of gas. And uh, the government has no answers on this. Immediately he said uh, nuclear doesn't stack up. Yeah, he said that before. I, I mean, uh, look, the government has their lines on this. They're relying on the CSIRO. But then you could look at the International Energy Agency. The International Energy Agency says that nuclear is the lowest cost form of low-carbon generation. And they're looking at countries all over the world. They're looking at real-world projects. The CSIRO continues to rely uh, on modelling, on discredited modelling, may I add. Uh, and so, look, if it, if it works in France, if it's working in Finland to, to lower their prices, uh, what's so different about Australia that it couldn't work here... Uh, it's worth giving a shot because, as I say, the, the current government's approach is failing before our eyes. Do you eyes. think... Uh, I know you're not a member of the Liberal Party, but as a member of the Coalition, is this move by Matt Keane... Do you see it as treacherous? Look, I'll leave that to the Liberal Party. I mean, I don't care. I really don't care at all. Um, and it's consistent my beef's... with his previous Yeah, views. exactly. It's consistent with Matt's views. Uh, my beef's not with Matt Keane. My, my beef's with a government that is... That is failing to live up to its promises uh, to lower power prices for Australians. We're all paying the price for that. And that's flowing through to the cost of groceries, to the cost of transport, to the cost of everything, because we have higher energy prices uh, than we need to have. Uh, so I'm interested in getting back on that. Now, Matt Keane's obviously on Team uh, Reckless Renewables. Let's keep going with this failing strategy of renewable energy that is destroying our bushland and pushing up the cost of energy for all Australians. Uh, I think that is a clearly failed agenda now and we need a different approach. The, um, the comment Matt Keane said to Andrew Clonell in 2021 was that he did hope that small modular yeah, reactors I remember that. would be delivered and he thought that they could be by the 2030s. Yeah, I remember that. I mean, then he said he had advice from departments saying the opposite and what have you. Uh, as I say, I, I think we've been failed by an excess of, of modelling in our country. Uh, we've been failed by... Uh, unfortunately, by the likes of CSIRO, the once respected CSIRO, who are living in a fantasy land of spreadsheets uh, rather than looking at what's happening in the real world. Uh, and Matt Keane's obviously been listening to those people living in that fantasy land. But in the real world, nuclear power stations are being rolled out right across the world. Uh, more than 30 countries are, are building them or looking do, to do build them right now. Do you think the nuclear option that you're yeah. adopting the coalition, should it be the majority of the energy in the mix by 2050, or would you say mostly... Is it mostly renewables? How would that... Yeah, look, my, my, the first thing is, way? I think it's ridiculous for governments to sit in here in 2024 and say, this is what the energy should mix should be in 2050. It's, like, absurd. I mean, uh, things can change, technologies develop. Uh, what the energy mix I want in 2050 is the one that will generate the lowest cost. I also believe that any modern industrial economy needs a mix of different electricity types. I've always said that, so I believe we'll still need coal-fired power in 2050. That puts me at odds with some of my own colleagues, but I can't see a world that doesn't rely significantly on fossil fuels in just a generation's time. Fossil fuels helps... Helps, helps grow half the world's food, for example. How are we going to grow enough food around the world if we don't have gas-based fertiliser? How do you have the coal? How do you, what do you mean? By 2050, coal? because they're all shutting down in 10 years. Well, I don't, why do they need to? They don't have to. <laughs> we can build new coal-fired power stations. Aren't, aren't I mean, they all, I, I, clapped, I, I, they all clapped out? Well, though, well we build new ones. Of course, machines machines do clap out. Yeah. Uh, they, they last longer than wind but factories what, what and solar what factories, but, no but they do. No build new ones. Why not? Why not? I mean, no-one was going to... Nuclear remains banned. I mean, I'm in, I'm in politics because I want to change things, Kieran, and I think eventually people will wake up to the craziness of the net zero agenda. I mean, we, we're not going to get to net zero emissions. It's mad. It's, and we're telling people lies about this, that somehow it's possible. It's not. Uh, and clearly the rest of the world is not lifting a finger to do this. And not just China and India. The US last year produced more oil than any country in any year ever. And it was the United States under, under Joe Biden. And, and yet we're still marching down this path to oblivion and saying we're going to get to net zero by 2050. Why? Why shouldn't we be prioritising uh, the cost of living Australians? I mean, I don't think are we you have an emissions that, target. Are we you have worried, a cost of living target are you to bring worried, down inflation. You're sort of talking about marching to oblivion. Are you worried that we're marching to oblivion on climate change as a planet? Uh, well, uh, uh, um, no, I, I'm not. I mean, it's not an existential threat at all. I mean, and, and, and the recent um, head of the IPCC has said that. 
that the, the, the scientists, some, some of the scientists, are scaring our children by saying somehow this is going to end human life. It's not. It is a challenge for the world. It needs to be met in a reasonable fashion that weighs up the costs and risks of other things. I mean, you also had a, you had a report by a very expected, respected economist, Richard Toll. He's pretty much the preeminent climate economist in the world, saying net zero by 2050 is mad. It's going to cost way, way more uh, than what uh, the benefits are of trying to meet it.